In Cyberpunk 2077, information is king, and the Edge Runners are kings of information. So today, I'm gonna to be trying the Edge Runner diet for 24 hours. Time to do a little bit of digging on our own. Now, what's really interesting is that in Cyberpunk, there are different classes that you can play and or be within the tabletop game and on Cyberpunk 2077. Edge Runner is no different, and in this case, we're going to be focusing on the Edge Runner. I found this really awesome post over on Reddit that has a ton of lore behind the characters and the people of Night City. Not only that, but it does go into the types of food that they eat, so this is pretty extensive and if you want to read it, it's going to be down below. But in this case, it says the Edge Runners are the most heterogeneous group in Night City. Often the characteristic that defines them is the unorthodox lifestyle. Their occupations cover the full spectrum of activities from smuggling to assassination to net running or more artistic endeavors such as music or entertainers. One month, an Edge Runner can be enjoying the pleasures of organic food, which is not common in Night City, or erotic brain dances, while the next month they might have a diet of roasted rat kebabs. Let's head back to the lab because we have a lot to do today. We have a pretty fun little mission ahead of us and uh, I have a feeling that I'm going to regret it as soon as we're done with it. CD Projekt Red had sent over this amazing ramen bowl so we are absolutely using this. Into the ramen bowl, I'm putting my pack of instant ramen followed by the seasoning. Guess you guys have probably done this 2,077 times by now. Add just enough water to make sure it's covering the noodles. This looks very sad in this giant bowl but I, I'm using, I don't care, I'm using it. I approve of your decision to use this because this bowl is absolutely beautiful. Throw the lid on it and let those noodles hang out while you locate the world's cutest pan, crack a whole egg into it, fry it up slightly, making sure it's still sunny side up, or you can have the egg however you want. They also sent me these, and these are amazing. Can we turn off the lights? Look at that. And they have multiple colors. Look at, okay, we'll go blue and red. We'll go blue and red. Very cyberpunk, very aesthetic. Give the noodles a quick toss to make sure they're fully coated and hydrated. Top this with your piece of cheese, followed by your egg, and your $1 cyberpunk ramen is ready. When an edge runner starts their day, they have to start it pretty quickly. They don't have a lot of time to lollygag. That's where a high calorie meal like this comes in. This also does look pretty delicious and I haven't had top ramen in a while, so I'm gonna enjoy this. We're gonna have some togarashi. Togarashi, togarashi. Why did I say tog? What is a tog? This is gonna kill my stomach for what's about to come. Look at that, get the yolk in there. You gotta have that craft cheese in there. It is what it is, it's a dollar breakfast. Oh yeah, oh it's good. But now the real fun begins. <coughs> spicy. <laughs> I'm dying. Now the real fun begins. Now here's where things get interesting. I have a date with another free runner. This is DJ and he's going to teach me everything he knows about parkour in a one hour time frame. But the kicker is we have to bring lunch to him. And lunch is going to be the burrito XXL because well, it's big. Now listen, no one can say anything because this Herdes Salsa Verde is freaking delicious and each of these cans is about 60 cents. To this three pounds worth of chicken thigh, I'm throwing in one of those cans of the green salsa along with some hatch green chilies. Season it with a hefty amount of black pepper and a nice heavy pinch of salt. Now I just need to mix these up just so that way all the salsa and the hatch green chilies kind of coat all that chicken thigh. I'm placing these onto a sheet tray lined with some aluminum foil just so that way they're easier to bake and so they don't make a complete mess in the oven. I actually need two sheet trays for all this chicken because it's so much. Also, I never leave any of those hatch chilies behind so I'm making sure that I place all of them right on top of that chicken. I feel like I'm in an episode of Butt Cheaper with Weissman. Now these go into the oven at 450 degrees Fahrenheit for around 15 to 18 minutes or until they get some nice color. Now because we are trying to keep this on the cheap, we are just gonna be using some jasmine rice. I'm using around one and a half cups worth of jasmine rice and enough water to come up to that first knuckle that everyone knows and loves. I'm gonna add a pinch of salt and then bring this over to the stove to cook. All we're gonna do is bring this to a boil, cover it and let it simmer for around 15 minutes. Chicken is on, rice is on. Those are gonna be 15 to 20 minutes. So we need to make our own tortillas. You can also just buy tortillas. You're not gonna hurt my feelings, I promise. But homemade tortillas, three cups of all-purpose flour, bing, bang, boom, followed by one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of baking powder. Give this a quick mix with your hands, then add in one cup worth of warm water, followed by a third of a cup of vegetable oil. Give this a quick mix just to make sure it starts hydrating that flour. You may be wondering, Paul, where did you get that amazing cyberpunk shirt with Gandalf and Lucian on it? Don't worry, I'll tell you in a little bit. We will tell you in a little bit. For now, we're gonna finish the tortillas. Once it's a nice shaggy mess, this is when I actually start bringing it together to start forming some gluten. You want to start forming the gluten in the bowl first and then slap it down on your cutting board to then work this for around five minutes. Or you can do what this guy's doing over here, cheating. 
using the machines. I was here the whole time. Uh-huh, sure you were, buddy. Once that dough is nice and plump, throw it back into your bowl, and we're gonna let this rest for around 30 minutes while we start cooling down the rest of our ingredients. By now, the rice is done and ready to be cooled down. Throw that on a sheet tray and place it to the side. The chicken thighs are also cooked and ready to go. They hopefully taste delicious and actually really, really hot. I don't know why I put this in my mouth. And now, the dough should be ready to work with. After those 30 minutes of relaxation, your dough should be plump and supple and ready to go. Cut this into four equal pieces, which are kind of big. These look incredibly big right now. We just said that. Now start rolling out your dough into those beautiful round flour tortillas. This is not round at all, Paul. What are you trying to pull over here? It's okay, I was attempting to make flatbread, so instead we're gonna try to make round tortillas this time by actually rounding the dough. See, I knew I could do it. Now once you have it nice and round, put this thing onto your rolling pin and drape it into a large paella pan that is over a nice medium high heat. Those tortillas only take around four to five minutes on each side to fully cook. So I decided that I would start cooling these down one at a time and start rolling out the other ones just so this way I had a constant process going. One thing that I like to do and hopefully uh, internet Shaquille agrees with me is to cover my flour tortillas for like five or 10 minutes while they're cooling down. So this way you trap a lot of that steam and they kind of continue cooking and they soften up. Now while the tortillas are cooling, this is when I'm going to take the opportunity to start slicing all of my chicken, make sure Rachel steals as much as she wants, and I'm gonna go ahead and coat the rest of my chicken with that second can of sauce. After I give it a quick mix, I'm gonna give this a quick taste test just to make sure it doesn't need anything else, make sure the wife tastes it, and see what she has to say. More spicy. More spicy? And for more spicy, I'm leaning towards the hob. This is a local company out here in Portland, and they make amazing habanero salsas. I'm drenching this thing in that salsa. Oh yeah, that's really good. I'm also seasoning my rice with just a hefty glug of olive oil, followed by a bunch of black pepper. The olive oil does help break this down and give it a nice flavor. After you break down the rice, make sure you do taste some of it because if the chicken is perfectly seasoned but this isn't, then it's gonna kind of cancel each other out and it's gonna be sort of bland. So make sure this has enough salt and pepper. And after giving this a taste, it did need just a sprinkle of salt. And now we are ready to start forming all of our burritos. Okay, that's fine. This is why I never get anything done. Happy wife, happy life. <laughs> Now that I'm only forming three burritos, I have plenty of ingredients, and we're starting off with a hefty amount of cheddar cheese, followed by a bunch of our chicken, and then quite a few scoops of our rice, trying to make this as big as possible, making sure that the sides are tucked in and it is fully stuffed, so this way the burrito is nice and hefty. This is a thick boy. That's a nice burrito. After admiring your thick burrito, form the other ones and you are ready. Now these three giant things can't actually be served like this. Because I want these burrito XXLs to be like they came out of a vending machine, I need to wrap these in parchment paper followed by a ton of plastic wrap. This is not only going to help it stay fresh, but when I go to heat it up later, it's like it came out of a vending machine. I labeled one for myself and one for my future trainer, DJ, because he's gonna be so happy with this. Now we finally get to go deliver these, and there are a few things we have to do before we get to eat these. And one of them is stuffing both of these giant burritos into this beautiful League of Legends bag made by Timbuk2. Yes, I had to get it just for this. Once those burritos are ready, we headed out. Now my mission is to go to Revolution Park and attempt to do a parkour course like they would in Edge Runner. This is a full on parkour gym where people practice here every single night. And I was super excited to meet my coach, which is DJ, who is up here hanging out like Spider Man. Also, sorry for the upcoming scuffed audio. Guys, we're here at Revolution Parkour. This is DJ. He's gonna hopefully show me how to be an edge runner because I don't know how. I'm old and decrepit. Hopefully, he can give me some tips. So, DJ, what do you have for us today? All right, so I'm gonna show you guys around the gym, see what I can work with here. See, we got a multitude of obstacles and stuff here. You're able to move them around. We also got some bigger ones. Works super well with lines. Makes them look super clean. Off like we were talking about, this is gonna be me falling into a trash can. That's what that's, yeah. Now the first thing DJ wanted to show me is how to come up onto this very, very high box. I thought to myself, this is gonna be fairly easy. It's not that high. And then I finally got up there. I was super proud of myself and I realized this is actually really, really high and I didn't know how to get down. So DJ came up there to try to help me out and he came down and up effortlessly. I honestly couldn't figure it out. So he said, Paul, just step on this little railing we have over here so this way you don't die coming down. I was finally able to get down and I was very proud of myself. I'm just trying to make sure Senpai is happy with everything. Now he wanted to show me the roll and I decided to not roll for some reason. And then we tried doing the safety maneuver, which is a very easy way of getting over a high obstacle. Now for this, I'm using my dominant hand to plant onto the obstacle and then stepping over with my opposite leg. And that felt relatively good. And then DJ said, okay, well now you have to do all of this. And I had no idea how to do any of that. I could barely get up onto this box. I was really nervous that I was gonna try to just shatter DJ's arms, but eventually I almost, well, almost made it on. I felt pretty confident with that, so DJ showed me to the next step where I had to do an underbar. So I decided to start from scratch and oof, yep, that's me. 
that's me right now. But I continued on making sure that I did the safety followed by the tack, which we just kind of turned into a crane maneuver. And from there, I hesitantly jumped to the next box, which I feel like looking at it now, I probably could have made it completely without hitting it. And then finally hit the underbar. And this was my course. So now I'm going to follow my senpai DJ as he takes the harder route. It makes everything just look like he's floating through air while it looks like I am a wrecking ball hitting everything on the way over to my destination. Look at this guy. Why is he even wearing Naruto pants if he can't? DJ just ran the whole course and he's waiting for me. All I can say is that this just makes me want to try to do this again and do it better. So now the real mission is to see if he can deliver these burritos without destroying them. So DJ decided to take the most insane course I've ever seen. He's just going all over the gym, making sure he hits every obstacle like an absolute Chad. Look at this guy go. This whole gap. And then he finally makes it to his destination, passes off the burritos and then I make my great escape which was the most awkward thing to look at and is super cringe please turn off your cell phones right now you don't need to watch this and since this audio sounds really bad I'm just gonna dub my own voice and we're gonna look at those burritos that weren't actually in the backpack because I didn't feel like sacrificing six pounds worth of burritos but I did get DJ a really cool cyberpunk t-shirt that I thought he would love after speaking to him for a little bit I also gave him his very own burrito XXL and gave him that cyberpunk shirt and he seemed to love it so hopefully DJ if you're watching this I really hope you do enjoy it thank you so much for having me at the gym and showing me the ropes and then just one last thing do you guys have a microwave oh it's hot oh it's hot mission was a success i can finally have lunch oh, oh my god look at that i put so much rice in these huh. for being just about two dollars this is freaking amazing holy crap the chilies, the rice, everything. And you know what? I think we earned ourselves a really fun dinner. But we have one more mission after that. So with Night City, it's considered a felony to put pineapple or pineapple adjacent product on pizza according to section one, article 5A of the Pizza Desecration Act. We do not care about that said act because we are edge runners and we are putting pineapple and tuna on pizza for dinner. It's pizza time, so 360 grams worth of all-purpose flour, followed by 120 grams worth of water, 120 grams worth of milk, 7 grams worth of olive oil, 7 grams worth of salt, 4 grams worth of yeast. Mix this thing up until it starts forming a dough. This only takes about 60 seconds. This happens very quickly. Now, once you have your dough ready and it's blended, this is when we put it onto or Stop playing with it, Paul. This is when you put it onto your cutting board and you do a few slap and folds. The slap and folds really help build more gluten. Once you have this nice plump boy, place it into a well-oiled bowl try to throw a lid on it place it to the side for around two hours now we're going to be working on the rest of ingredients first off is going to be the pizza sauce which is just crushed tomatoes salt two cloves of garlic and some black pepper next up is some pineapple and this pineapple smells amazing all we're doing for the pineapple is trimming it down so there is no peel on it cutting it in half to remove the core and once you cut the core out this is when we just cut it into small thin slices remember you don't want these too thick because they won't bake properly in the oven because pineapple pizza has to have quite a bit of pineapple on it the next piece is going to be some diced firm tofu. Yes, you heard me right, ladies and gentlemen, diced firm tofu for this pizza. This is getting very, very weird. Now for the secondary sauce, it's going to be an avocado tofu lemon sauce. This is the strangest thing I think I've ever made. We're combining one half block of tofu, one whole avocado, a heavy pinch of salt, one half a lemon, blending this until it is smooth. And look at this consistency. This looks like heaven. I just want to dip my face into it, which I did after hours. Now the final piece is going to be seared tuna. This is just seasoned with salt and green pepper seared over a nice high heat just until everything is seared on the outside. By now, we should be ready to work with the dough one more time. This is just introducing some more folds and building more gluten into the dough. We do this for about three or four minutes, keep it on the cutting board and throw the bowl back on it. Once it's doubled in size again, this is when you give it a few smackings, fold it back in on itself to make it into a ball one more time. And this needs to sit for an additional 30 to 40 minutes. And then we can finally build our pizza crust or you could just go buy pizza crust, you're not gonna hurt my feelings. Once you've formed your pizza shell, grab your pizza paddle. I'm using some heavy cornmeal here just to make sure it gets a nice crust and it doesn't burn in the oven. Throw your pizza dough onto that cornmeal. Brush the pizza dough with olive oil. Super important. Gives a lot of flavor and nice color. Then a hefty scoop of your pizza sauce. You can do as much as you want here. Then a ton of mozzarella cheese. Make sure you feed Gandalf and Lucian some mozzarella cheese, followed by a ton of pineapple. This is a pineapple pizza. Put pineapple on it. Then some fresh sliced red onion, followed by your tofu 
tofu and then some serrano peppers that I had laying around. Completely missed the no. pizza pan no. that we had preheating the oven. Save it somehow. Get that pizza on there. Adjust it if necessary. Bake this thing at 450 degrees Fahrenheit for around 25 minutes. After 25 minutes, this pizza should be beautiful, golden, cheesy, and delicious. Place this on your cutting board. Grab that now sliced tuna. Dress this as well as you want. Place all of the tuna on there and then grab the sauce that I somehow put into a bottle. Squeeze it all over this pizza. Look at how sexy this starts to look. Once you have that sauce on there, we can now finally cut the weirdest pizza. This is why Night City banned pineapple on pizza. I will admit, this is the strangest pizza I think I've ever ever made. The Demon Slayer one was weird. This one throws it out of the park. But there's only one way we can eat this, and that's with the next training session. Gandalf, better not eat any of this pizza while I'm up there. <sighs> Here we go. Really? An ad we just we just started. This video is actually in collaboration with Into the AM for this beautiful Cyber Cafe t-shirt. Well, I guess we'll enjoy the pizza while watching this ad. So here we go. Into the AM asked me a while ago if they wanted to work together to create a beautiful t-shirt for this community. I absolutely love the cyberpunk genre and I absolutely love the way we can incorporate the old with the new, which is something that I love about it. This Cyber Cafe t-shirt is everything that I would have wanted, a piece of artwork that I wanted to share with you guys and you guys help provide feedback for. Oh. No, you're interrupting the ad. It was really cool to see the community come together and really create this shirt and bring it to life. Not only that, but for the Chef PK community, there are a bunch of Easter eggs on this t-shirt like Ganelf and Lucian down below with myself and my very own food cart. No, yeah, no. I absolutely love the way this came out and I hope you guys enjoy it too. And if you wanna pick one up and support the channel directly, you're gonna save 10% off of your orders at the link down below. So head to the link down below, pick up your very own Cyber Cafe t-shirt that you guys helped create and enjoy that pizza. How did, how, how did, how did he know about, how did he know about the pizza? How did he know about, Hmm. This pizza is actually fantastic, and I think I'm going to add it to my repertoire of weird recipes to share with friends. But what you guys should do is check out the shirt down below where you can pick up your very own Chef PK Cyber Cafe t-shirt featuring Gandalf and Lucian. I really hope you guys enjoy it. My name is Chef PK. Remember, keep playing with your food. Now we're gonna we're gonna hack the Gibson. Yes, it's so good. It's such like the best line from that era ever. Mm. That pizza though? Is that? Oh, mm.